the Canon 50mm f1.8 Mark II, better known as the Nifty 50 or the Plastic Fantastic, has now been out for 30 years. And in that time, it cemented its place as the must-have affordable SLR lens for Canon cameras. I mean, these things went from being really cheap to really, really cheap to hilariously, ridiculously cheap to the point where they've become one of the most ubiquitous camera equipment items I've ever seen. I mean, seriously, virtually every single Canon photographer I've ever met, if not had one, still does have one. And for good reason, these really were the absolute best deal you really would ever get on a Canon SLR lens. But to what extent is this still true? Because here's the thing, we've actually had a lot of alternatives pop up. Starting off in the last decade, the 2010s, we had a boom of alternatives coming out to the 50mm f1.8 Mark II. First and most obviously is going to be the updated version with the upgraded STM autofocus motor, better macro, better build quality for not that much more money. Additionally, for people looking for an even cheaper version of this lens, there was the Yangno version, which was so cheap it managed to make the 50mm Plastic Fantastic seem expensive by comparison. And then there was also released that decade the 40mm f2.8, which many would argue has replaced the 50 as the must-have affordable prime for Canon full frame. And those are just some of the alternatives that came out in the 2010s. You also have to account for the resurgence of interest in older 50mm primes. For example, there's the original 50mm f1.8 Mark I, which despite being older than the Plastic Fantastic, actually has the same optics yet better build quality. And then there's also the 50mm f1.4, because yeah, the 50mm f1.8 has dropped in price over the years, but so has the 1.4 with its more desirable wider maximum aperture. So with all that in mind, is the Plastic Fantastic still the must-have cheap prime lens for Canon users? Now let's start off by discussing the build quality, because that's definitely one of the areas of this lens that gets criticized the most. And it's not great. This is definitely one of the most plasticky feeling, cheap feeling lenses Canon has possibly ever released for a DSLR. Certainly the most plasticky feeling of any lens that I'd ever actually recommend owning or using. Now with that said, it's not all bad news. For example, unlike something like the 18 through 55, which is equally plasticky, the 50mm f1.8 is much less prone to breaking. The 18 through 55 kit lens is notoriously poorly built, very, very prone to breaking, and that is not at all the case for the 51.8. These things are known for being put through a lot of hard work and abuse, and they still keep going and going and going. So if your concern is how well the lens will work, that should not be a worry at all. Although again, that's not discounting the fact that it is really, really cheaply made. Moving on to focusing then, and it's also kind of a mixed bag. So there's two good things I have to say about the focusing and two bad things. So let's get the bad news out of the way first. First of all, it's the obvious one. The focus ring is incredibly cheap and plasticky feeling. It's probably the single cheapest part of any Canon camera product I've ever felt. I mean, it's just hilariously, absurdly cheap feeling. So that's the one downside of the focusing. The other downside is going to be the autofocus noise. It's really noisy and makes a really obnoxious noise. So for people looking for a more silent autofocus, you know, maybe you're going to be doing autofocus during video or whatever, this is not going to be the lens for you in that case. But like I said, there are two things I really like about the focusing. Starting off with the autofocus, yeah, it's loud, but it's actually really fast. I was surprised about that. It's not quite USM fast, but it's not far off. I would actually say that the autofocus on this lens is actually faster than the STM autofocus on, say, the 40mm f2.8. So speed is actually not going to be concerned at all. And the other thing I like about the focus is going to be accuracy. For autofocus, I have no problems with accuracy whatsoever, even on cameras that supposedly have bad autofocus accuracy, like the 5D Mark II, but I've discussed that in other videos. And the other thing I like about the focus of this is actually, yeah, the manual focus ring doesn't feel good, but again, it actually works great. I felt a lot of manual focus rings that are a lot less convenient, a lot less accurate, and yet, like I said, it feels pretty cheap, but the actual act of manual focusing and maintaining and getting focus using manual focus is actually not a problem at all. It works really, really well. So regarding focus, it has its ups and downs. Now, let's talk versatility and usability. Now, to start off, let's look at the focal length. And there are some good things and bad things about this as well. 
Starting off, I don't think this is as good of a general purpose focal length on full frame as the 40 is. I think if you wanted to have just one lens to leave on your camera more or less indefinitely and kind of be your default daily driver lens, I kind of recommend the 40 more for full frame. But the thing is, I actually recommend the 50 more on APS-C because here's the thing. On APS-C, when you account for the crop factor, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with the 40's focal length, but the 50's equivalent focal length of about 80 to 85, I think is going to be much more desirable. You kind of are hitting that nice sweet spot for portraiture, whereas the 40 has an equivalent focal length that's closer to about 70, which again, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not really hitting that sort of classic focal range that people really, really like doing. So for people looking to get this on APS-C, you know, you're looking as like a portrait lens or maybe a product photography lens, I'm actually inclined to recommend the 50 a little bit. Another obvious thing I like about the versatility of the 51.8 is, of course, the f1.8 maximum aperture. Now, throughout the years, whether it had been the film era, EF SLR lenses, or even more of the more recent ones for APS-C or more recent full frame ones, you know, if you find cheaper primes, they're more often than not going to be f2.8. So if you're looking at other lenses that are going to be on the older side, you know, late 80s, early 90s, you have the 24 and 28 mil primes, which are f2.8. And then, of course, if you come back closer to the present with the 40 millimeter, which we just mentioned, that's also f2.8. So this is actually one of the cheaper lenses you'll find that has that f1.8 maximum aperture, which is something people really, really like. Now let's move on to the big one, and that of course is image quality. And that's really why people buy cheap 50 mil primes, because they are traditionally always been the most bang for your buck when it comes to getting image quality. You get such fantastic image quality for such a low price, that's why people like cheap fast 50s. And this one is no exception to that. Starting right off the bat at f1.8, image quality is really good. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, but it's going to be really solid, good enough for a significant amount of the time. But honestly, even if you stop it down a little, the image quality gets so amazing so fast, it's really mind-blowing that they could sell it for so cheap. So image quality, two thumbs up, no surprises there. So now we have all that in mind. The question remains, is the 50 millimeter Plastic Fantastic, Nifty 50, F1.8 Mark II, whatever you want to call it, is it obsolete as a deal? Is it still the best deal to go with? And you know what? It is still the best deal to go with if you're looking for a cheap prime lens for a Canon camera, whether it be full frame or APS-C. And ultimately, it boils down to this. It is still the most lens per dollar you can get for any product that's available for Canon DSLRs. Yes, there have been ones that are better in some ways, but none are as good of a value. For example, the newer 50mm f1.8, yeah, it's a really good lens. It has some nice modernization features, but it doesn't adjust the optics. So you're paying more and not getting better image quality. And for me, the most important thing of the lens is image quality. So getting the lens that gives you the most image quality per dollar is going to be the best deal. And it's the same deal with the Yongno. Yeah, it's cheaper, but the image quality isn't nearly as good, so you're getting less optical performance per your dollar. Or how about the 40mm f2.8? I actually think that's a better lens, but that lens can generally go for twice the price as the 50, and it's just not twice as good by any stretch of the imagination. And it's a similar deal with the older 50 millimeters, the better build quality f1.8, the older one, as well as the f1.4. Yeah, they have their advantages here and there, but they're a lot more expensive. Again, so making this 50 millimeter the best deal, the best bang for your buck, it's still completely a must-have lens for Canon DSLR users.